Next question is from Tazy Kloppers. What realizations did you have in your 20s that changed your life? Oh, uh, well, I can think of one. This was might have been 19 or 20, uh, but one of my mentors um, taught me a, a valuable skill when it comes to communication. He said, use your ears and your mouth in proportion. He says, if you want to be a good communicator, you need to learn how to listen uh, twice as much as you talk. And that really made a huge difference in how I communicated to clients. Because up until that point, you know, I started off training people at the age of 18. So for the first year or two, I was really good at telling and talking and telling and motivating. Um, but I don't think I was very good at listening and asking questions. And you learn a lot when you ask questions and it helps form it helps you form how you're going to communicate certain things. Plus, the person who's talking to you now feels more engaged in the conversation. So I remember that specifically. And I, I think I was 20 when I first heard mm. that. <sighs> yeah. Got, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. No, go ahead, Justin. Yeah, no, I was just thinking about this because I'm pretty sure like, well, it wasn't 20. It was like 18, 20-ish where – uh, I know there's like rituals of becoming a man or becoming a woman and, um, you, you know, and then we celebrate this. We used to, this used to be like a big deal, uh, you know, back in the day. And I, I, uh, I found myself actually going through this, this process of like, who, who am I specifically? Like, I know who I am based off of like, my parents are these people, my brother, you know, I'm affiliated with, you know, this, this circle of friends that I grew up with, but you know, I, I, I really didn't have my own specific identity. And uh, this is where this time in my life, I decided to just go do something that was completely uh, uh, my own decision and be away from my comfort zone and everybody here and basically just moved and traveled across country and completely restarted from scratch and uh, went through that whole journey. And I thought that uh, I did, at the time, I didn't even know that that was like a significant thing for me to do that. It was just like, well, I got to, I got to figure this out. I got to do something, uh, you know, and I got to go to college. I got to learn. I got to, you know, figure out what I'm going to do for my career. Uh, there was an opportunity that was there. So I just decided like, I want to do this. And, you know, I, I, I found so much value in that because I was so reliant on my comforts and all these things, you know, back home that, uh, I didn't realize I, I, I was really sheltering myself, uh, and limiting my potential. And so I, I'm very much like of an advocate now for this and want to see this, uh, with my, my own kids and, and have them evaluate this and, and go, go find themselves and, and really own their belief system and who they are and, uh, you know, sort of recreate themselves. I think that's, you know, very, very cool thing to do. So I had a, I had a ton of epiphanies in my 20s that changed my life forever. So I'm going to share two of them because I think they're they're two of the most important. Um, I just we just had an interview recently and we were sharing stories and uh, one of them happened in a company in my in my mid 20s that changed my life forever. And that was uh, I went through this moment where or moment in time where uh, I was really frustrated with where I was at in my career. Um, I expected myself to be somewhere else financially. I thought I'd be at a much higher level. At that time, I thought I would be the district or the vice president level for this company. I was doing all the things I thought I needed to do to be successful, and I wasn't getting promoted fast enough. And uh, I was really angry. I was angry at the, the company, and I blamed others for where I was at. And I had this epiphany of, why am I allowing this company to dictate my personal growth and why does it matter my title and and what position I hold in it on how how successful or how much I can grow as an individual and so I began reading that's when I really started to read like before that I like I hated reading I didn't pick up a book that often and and at the time the CEO was putting out a book every single month that he was uh, you know saying that he was reading and so I said you know what if I if I believe that I should be a VP why don't why don't I read as much as what this CEO is reading and learn as much as he is and that set me off on a path of of personal growth that I think accelerated uh, my financial success uh, in the the rest of my life so that was one big moment for me uh, the other one was uh, that was huge for me in my twenties was evaluating the circle of my friends. And I don't remember where the first time I heard the, the the old saying of that you are the average of the five people that you spend the most time with, but that was very impactful for me to really start to evaluate that. And I think initially when I heard that, it kind of went in one ear, went out there, oh, that's cool. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah, you hang out with a lot of successful people, you'll probably be successful. 
but not to the point where I really started to evaluate it and think like, okay, I've got the, cause I had friends that really close best friends and people I spent a lot of time with and I loved and, and had, and, and, and really enjoyed. But the more I started to think about that, I said, man, uh, you know, am I the, the, the one leading this circle of five people or am I kind of in the middle of that? And like, am I really stretching myself and, and am I really putting myself around other people that are trying to elevate me? And, and it was tough because in the, in your mid twenties, and a lot of people are still very attached to their friends in college or high school that they've built. And a lot of times at that age, you don't realize that the things that you have in common with them are are things that maybe are not your favorite qualities. For example, like you know, some of my best friends in high school are like my drinking buddies. You know, the, the guys that would do crazy, stuff. and we had loyalty to each other. So there was this bond because we were loyal to each other but they weren't really helping me grow as a person or they weren't pushing me to be a better version of myself. They're who I got together with and partied and had fun and had a good time and I enjoyed that. And so I, I would gravitate to that a lot. And when I started to really evaluate uh, where they were financially, where they were with personal growth and were they stretching themselves to get better and collectively uh, were we all doing that? And the answer was no. And that was when I began to really start to seek out people that were in positions or places in their life that I wanted to go to, even though I wasn't currently there and started to spend more of my time with them. When that circle started to change, uh, so much started to happen in my life. And then I also learned that, that that continues to evolve. And I really believe that's what what has led to the, the circle in this room. Uh, the reason why I think we all work so well together is I think we, we share this in common and we, we may have never found each other had we not all been on that similar path of trying to elevate the people that were always around. And, you know, when you get a group, when you actually get a group of four or five other men or women that are like-minded like that, that are pushing uh, themselves and each other to grow and to be better versions of themselves every day, it's amazing how much that fast tracks you in your life to success. Right on. Mm -hmm.